Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Today I have the perfect beginner sewing project for you. In this pencil case, you'll learn how to zigzag your edges to stop the fabric from fraying. You'll learn how to sew in a zipper and edge stitch it. You'll learn how to make a strap and you'll learn how to box the corners like that to create this square shape. And all of those techniques can be used to make also a more advanced project like a cosmetic pouch or a messenger bag. So if you're ready, I'm gonna show you what you need and how to do it. To make this pencil case, you'll need a square of fabric in a woven cotton that's not stretchy or fuzzy or silky. And it should be about 28 centimeters or 11 inches square. And for the handle or strap, you'll need a piece that's about 28 centimeters by 5 centimeters or 11 inches by 2 inches. And then you'll need a matching zipper that is at least 11 inches long, but even longer is better. Make sure your zipper is a nylon coil like this so that we can sew across it and so that we can cut it. If it's a heavy plastic or metal zipper, it won't work for this. You'll need matching thread and a sewing machine. We'll be starting off with a zigzag stitch. It's a, about three millimeters by, by three millimeters. On the machines in my classroom, the zigzag is stitch number seven. Starting with your 11 inch or 28 centimeter square, we're gonna be doing that zigzag stitch all around all four edges. And we're using that zigzag stitch to make sure the fabric doesn't continue to fray. So the needle is gonna be coming on the fabric and off and on the fabric and off. My presser foot is actually hanging off the edge of the fabric. I've got the edge of the fabric lined up with the right hand side of the opening of my zigzag foot here because we want that zigzag stitch to be right on the edge. And starting with the back tack at the beginning, going all the way around and back tacking at the end. And can you see that the needle's going on the fabric and then off the fabric? Now you can keep your speed really slow if you're a beginner, but then speed it up as you get more comfortable. So slow down when you get to the corners. And then when the needle is down, lift up and turn, and then keep going. It should end up looking something like that. Back tack at the end, and then lift up and pull out. Cut your thread over here by the fabric. Never cut your thread by the needle or you can use the thread cutter on the side of the machine. I'm switching back to a regular straight stitch and now I'm gonna to switch to a zipper foot. So there's a button at the back of that presser foot that you just pop off the regular presser foot, put it aside in a safe place. And then we're gonna take the zipper foot and put it on the left hand side. Just place it underneath where you want it to be and then just plunk down onto it. Good. And then I'm going to choose whichever stitch moves your needle over to the left. On our machines in my classroom, it's stitch number two. This is the right side of the zipper. And we're going to put this together with the right side of the fabric. So the right sides or good sides are touching. And I want these raw edges, the raw edge of the zipper, to be lined up with the raw edge of the pencil case on the side here. Good. So I'm going to put a pin there. But then I'm going to move this slider right out of my way. And this is why if a zipper is extra long, that's why it's a bit easier because I can get that slider all the way out of my way. Okay. Can you see on this zipper tape, there is a little section running right down the middle of the zipper tape that looks a little bit more like railroad tracks. It's just woven a little bit different. That's where we want to guide the needle. So once, I've got my, once I have my piece in place, I can take out that pin. And you definitely should never hit a metal piece with your needle because that will definitely break. I'm holding the zipper here where I can always see that zigzagged edge. If I go over a little bit, I don't know if I'm missing it entirely. So just let yourself always see that edge. And just go a little bit and organize. If you want to, of course, you could put pins all along that side to keep it organized. But you can also just organize as you go.
and a back tack at the end where you're going backwards that's how we tie a knot okay so the zipper is right side down here in fact you can even zip it back up so that you're sure you're going to get the right side of the zipper onto the right side of the other side of the pencil case so now on this side, I will use some pins because when you're sewing, you always want the edge on your right so that you can use the lines of the needle plate as a guide and so that you don't have a big bunch of fabric bunched up into the machine. So to have our edge on our right here, that means for this side of the zipper, we have to start at that end and work our way this way. So that means I am definitely going to pin this side. So again, I want the zigzagged edge to be visible. I want to point the pin towards where I'm going to start sewing, which is this end of the zipper. I want the raw edges lined up on this end the same way we did on that end. Good. And then I can continue pinning, pointing my pins towards where I'm going to be starting. Good. If your zipper is a little bit extra long like this, then that's good. You can reach inside and pull that slider all the way down out of your way. If your zipper ends here, just move the slider down maybe half or three quarters of the way, we are gonna to have to pause and move it back up out of the way. So starting equal with this end now, and again, aiming for those little railroad tracks, and take out your pins as you get to them. I wanna make sure I always see that zigzag edge sticking out. Now, can you see here, I'm going to be bumping into that slider and it's going to make my sewing go in a bump. So I'm going to lift up. I have to point this slider down. Then I can reach in from the other end and wiggle it under the zipper. There. Now it's out of my way. And I can continue on the seam. Good. So the zipper's in looking good. If your thread is wobbly or anything, if there's anything you want to fix, fix it before you move on to the next step. If I think I've gone too close to the teeth, I just need to make sure I can at least run my thumbnail down beside the teeth. If I can't fit my thumbnail down there, then the zipper slider won't go there either, but I've got plenty of room here. I want to be able to do an edge stitch right beside the zipper here. And to be able to do that, I need to move the zipper foot over to the right side of it. So I'll pop it off, move it over to the right, but now you can see that needle is gonna hit the zipper foot. So I need to switch back to move my needle to the right. On the machines in my classroom, that would be stitch number one. So small back tack at the beginning of every seam, small back tack at beginning and end. So I don't want my fabric too far from the zipper. I can. Even if my stitching wobbled, I can straighten out that fold and I want to be guiding my needle right along maybe about a millimeter or a sixteenth of an inch from that folded edge. So the zipper foot is running just beside the teeth, but my needle is up on the fold. My left hand can be guiding that fold in closer or farther just to straighten it out. If I find that the fabric is getting pushed like this, I don't want to sew down a big pucker like that, so I can just lift up, ease my fabric back a bit, and then continue. And a back tack at the end. Now I'm using the cutting button on my machine and that just leaves a short bit of thread, but it leaves your needle in the highest position. So that's actually pretty convenient. Your edge stitch should look something like that, hopefully nice and straight. Same thing on the other side. Can you see that where it's getting pushed? Just ease it back. We're done with the zipper foot now for this project. Switching back to your regular presser foot, plunk down onto it, tuck your thread in between the toes of the foot. Good. So that's what we want with the raw edges even on this edge 
and the nice edge stitching coming down both sides of the zipper nice and straight wonderful at the iron with my iron set on cotton and lots of water and full steam I just want to press my strap piece flat first and then I'm going to fold it in half right sides out bringing those raw edges together and giving that a good press flat when I open it out now I'll see that line right down the center and I'm going to bring the raw edge into that center line same thing to the other side bring that raw edge into the center so they are just touching and now the whole thing folds in half and I want these two folded edges to really line up nicely, to just be nice and even there. If they're not even, it's going to be harder to sew it properly. I'll give that a good shot of steam. Good, and now that's nice and flat. Let it cool for a second. It's going to be pretty hot. Good, now on this strap, I just want to sew nice and close to the edge, pretty much the same way I did here with that edge stitching I want to do it now right along the edge of the strap so you only have to sew one edge for, to make it functional but if you want it to look balanced so that both sides look the same you can also sew the other edge it's up to you now I'll take my strap and fold it in half I can trim up some of the yucky threads here and I want to take these two raw edges together and put them right on top of the teeth of the zipper now be careful if your zipper is short and you've got a metal stopper somewhere you have to be really aware of where that is because if you hit that with your needle you'll definitely break the needle so you might have to sew either closer to the edge or more inside so I'm pushing the back out of the way and getting that loop just lying nicely on top of the zipper. And I know this seems like it's going the wrong direction, but we always sew everything inside out and backwards. Making sure the back is not getting caught underneath there. And I'm just going to be doing a back tack across. So I just had the edge of my presser foot along the edge of the fabric. That's ideal, but as I say, you have to be careful of where your metal stopper is. Good. So now that this is back tacked, I can cut off the extra long zipper. So with the loop in place, now I can turn the whole pencil case inside out. Okay, I can just reach in and pull that inside out. Good. And then the loop should stay tucked in. And again, I know that seems wrong, but it's right. I want to lay it so the zipper's going right down the middle of this rectangle and the loop stays tucked in. And then I'm just going to sew across this end of the 15 line. Also want to sew across this end at the 15 line and that's why it's nice to have the raw edges even there because then the metal stoppers are inside the 15 line this slider though is in my way so I want to be able to open up the zipper but I don't want this gap to get any bigger so I'm gonna pin there and there right so with those two pins in place I'm gonna be able to pinch that zipper from the back here so that I can slide that out of the way a little bit more. Okay, this also gives me an opening to be able to turn the pencil case later. So again, just pinch it through the back of the fabric and slide it out of your way. But I know that these two ends are in the right place. So now I can freely sew the 15 and the 15 line on this side. And don't forget your back tacks at the beginning and the end. Take out your pins as you get to them. And I can even do an extra back tack right over that gap. Okay. 
Okay, almost done. One more step before we turn it right side out. We're going to be boxing the corners here. So to box the corners, I'm going to pull the back away from the front like this. Good. So I create this like flat square shape and pull it apart so you know it's entirely flat. And your seam line now is right in the middle of this triangle. If it's kind of going off on an angle, then just rearrange, reorganize until it's equal on both sides. Check that it's flat on the back and you haven't put in any extra folds. And then we're going to go this way. We're going to sew perpendicular to that first line. We're going to put the point to the 25 line. So this point is going to be riding at the 25 or 1 inch line. Back tack at the beginning. Straight across perpendicular to that seam. And then back tack at the end. And you'll notice that I have the seam allowance coming down away from the zipper just because it's way too hard to try to fold that zipper. So now same on the other side. Again, letting the seam allowance go away from the zipper. The line is right in the middle of my triangle and the point goes to the 25 or one inch line. And starting way back at the edge of that fold, So we're boxing all four corners like that. Last thing I do before I turn it right side out is trim off all my threads. And now we can turn it right side out. The loop comes out. Any threads that are still hanging around need to get trimmed off. And then you can shape those corners, poke them out nice and square. Zip it up. And look how nice that is. That is awesome. So there's our cute pencil case.